and I'm really excited today to introduce you to the shop customization. Now, the shop page, it is so different from all the other pages in WooCommerce. It actually exists as a WordPress page, right? And it has no short code, it has basically no content. That's all you have in WordPress. And whenever you go and see and view the page, magically you get the shop, right? So first thing is understanding how does this show on the page? Where is it coming from? And first, what I want to introduce you to is the concept of loop, L-O-O-P. The loop is the PHP code that is responsible to basically display all the posts in a page, no matter whether they're blog posts or they are um, products. And remember that WooCommerce products are posts, right? So what you're looking at right now is the actual um, WooCommerce loop, is the WordPress loop that generates all these lovely products put in a certain uh, layout. You have rows, you have columns, you have a specific number of products per page, you have the sorting drop down, you have the number of results, you have the title. What's the problem though? And what are we going to discuss today? Um, the thing that we're going to discuss today is the fact that this page is actually the exact same as the category page, right? And the exact same as the tag page. So there is one unique WooCommerce template file that controls all these, and that's the main problem. The problem is if we want to do something specific on just the shop page or something specific on a specific category page or something unique on a specific tag page, everything is generated by the same PHP file. So it's initially a big problem. And we will see at the very end of this lesson how to actually um, run our function only on specific pages. This is called conditional logic. But before we get that, we get there, I want you, I want to show you actually the file that I'm talking about. So as usual, I have a copy of the WooCommerce plugin in my computer. And every day I go in and check what's new or how it is built. And you will see that in the templates file, sorry, in the templates folder, there is a file called archive-product. And this archive-product, once I open it in a notepad, I'm actually, I want to increase the zoom here. Zoom in. And zoom in. So these archive-product.php controls product archives, including the main shop page. So shop page, category page, tag pages, everything is controlled by this little, unique, super important um, file, okay? So that's the very first thing that I wanted to talk to you about so if you're doing some change on the shop page, be aware that is going to show up on the category pages and tag pages as well. So be super careful and stay until the end of this class because we will cover that in detail. Now, I want to go back to our demo. This is my development site and I've said this a lot. You always need a copy of your website somewhere else where you can play with it, you can develop, you can test updates. This is the safest way to proceed with customization. 
I'm not going to repeat myself. We've seen that in episode one, episode two, and so on. So we're five now, and it's time that we move on. And as usual, and once again, I have this developed in a child team. So at the moment, the parent team is storefront, and the child team I'm working on, it's called Storefront Business Bloomer, but you can call it whatever you want, as long as you use a child team all the time. Once again, I'm not going to repeat myself. So at the moment, you're looking at my development site, and this is the child team. So it's basically calling the functions and the CSS of the parent team, but it's safer, it's easier to work on, and you will see how uh, important this is in the long term for your project management. Anyway, the shop page, as I said to you, has you know rows and columns. It has certain buttons. It has certain um, you know displays. It has a sidebar. It has a title. The thing is, the very first thing that people would think say, okay, I want to add a banner to the shop. So they go into edit page and they go and add a banner to the page. Let me see if I can find one. Um, say, for example, this one. It doesn't really matter what it is. So I put it there. I update. And I go viewing the page. And there you go. It's gone there. So it's no problem whatsoever to add content above the loop. Now you know what the loop is. The problem is, how do we add it under? And you know, there is no way in this page. I actually want to remove now the image, which is a little bit um, taking too much space. So I just put some content here. Um, you can't add it under the loop. Does that make sense? So that's our very first problem. And you know by now that I've developed a lot of what I used to call, what I still call, the visual hook guides. And specifically for the shop page, you have the exact layout and the exact position of all the hooks in WooCommerce, and in particular on the shop page, where you can basically use these hooks to add your own content. This is the best way to edit WooCommerce pages without overriding, and I can't say this enough, without overriding the templates. So, of course, we've just added something in this position by just adding text or images to the shop page. But what if we want to put something under the loop? Well, we could use something like WooCommerce after shop loop. So I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to my FTP. I open my child team. I open my functions.php. At the moment, it's empty. And what I do is I do add action. Open, open, copy the name of the hook, comma, I enter the name of the function, so something like show text under shop and close So what I'm doing basically, I'm saying WooCommerce, please position yourself after the shop loop and run this PHP function. So function must exist somewhere, otherwise it doesn't know what it is. That's the standard way to do it. Okay. Now, what I want to do is add in some content. And the way the way you do that in PHP is just by echoing something. So you echo test. Close the column, save. Upload to the server. And go to the shop page. And there you go. Test is right there. Possibly I need to add some CSS to send it to the next line. I'm actually going to do it right now because otherwise it doesn't look good. 
yeah, actually has gone, see, has gone before the uh, sorting. So I'm actually going to show you something really cool. I open again the function, I reload it, but this time I add a priority of 99. Let's see if that makes a difference. I go back to the server, upload it back. I'm going to refresh this page. And of course, test has gone down. What does that mean? Why I added that 99 and that made a difference? The problem is there is something else that is already hooking into this particular action. And in particular is this thing, is the uh, default sorting and showing the four, the four results thing. So by putting 99 or 110 or whatever, something that is higher than 10, because these two I think are using priority 10 or maybe 20. So by putting something above 20, I'm specifying that I want this to show after these two elements. Does that make sense? So whenever you see actions with a number, that number is called the priority and that's defining the order in which you want to position um, your content. In this case, we're positioning a string of text. So we basically found out that in order to add content above the shop, you can use the WordPress editor, but to, uh, uh, to add it under the shop, you need to use PHP. And in particular, based on my visual guide of all the hooks, you need to use the WooCommerce after shop loop. In this way, you position yourself under the products and add whatever you want, a banner, whatever HTML, whatever PHP, it doesn't matter. It's as simple as what we've done so far. So it's all easy so far, or technically easy, right? And I hope you agree and make sure, by the way, you know, at the end, we will have questions and answers. So if you guys want to start populating the chat with questions, I will get back into the chat room at the very end and reply to them all. I'm not going to reply to them right now because I have so many things to talk about. And, you know, I've seen, I've seen a lot of problems with this shop page and today right now we're about to fix them okay so a lot of requests a lot of things that people don't like for example these default sorting drop down some people don't want it the showing all the four results some people don't want it the sidebar that's not actually a problem because you can just go to edit page and say uh, full width and it should possibly work so let me do this test remove the inspect element see it didn't work fantastic so you know there is something and uh, that can be done to remove that sidebar it doesn't really respond to what you do in WordPress. And the reason is that this shop page is generated by WooCommerce itself. You can't do much. You can only expect to use those simple PHP hooks, PHP functions, and remove things and reorder things and add new things, all right? So now that we've added content above and below the shop page, what I want to do is changing the number of products. So at the moment, we have three products per row and we have two rows, right? What if we wanted two products per row? Well, there is a great and super simple snippet. If you don't know what a snippet is, take a look at Customize Woo episode one. There is a lovely WooCommerce snippet by Woo Teams actually, where it says change number of products per row. Very, very simple. And in case it's a Woo team, which means it's a storefront, uh, sorry, it's a team developed by Woo teams, therefore storefront, all you need to do is taking this one, 
this function and pasting it into your functions.php. So I'm going to reload. And this time I'm going to paste this. Let's take a look at what this function does. It's adding a filter. We'll possibly do a whole lesson about filters because it's a quite complicated thing. But basically what Woodims is saying, just change this five and that will define how many products per row you get. So I'm going to change that to two. And I'm going to save the file. I'm going to upload it back to the server and refresh the page and see what happens. Ta-da! You get the usual four results, but this time we've changed the number of product per row. That's exactly what Woodeams tells us to, to do and is very, very simple snippet. There is nothing complicated, just change the number and it's going to uh, do magic on your shop page. I will link to all these resources in the uh, uh, you know in the video notes. So don't worry about trying to find out what this address is. Don't worry at all. I'll put all the links um, after and whenever I uh, publish the recording. So we've seen how to change the number of products per row. Now it seems like the standard um, you know WooCommerce displays for example, what is it, eight or 12 or 20 products per page. And if there are more, you get page two, page three, page four. Does that make sense? So what I want to do also is changing the number of products per page. And the way you do that, once again, you Google it and you will find that WooTeams has a great snippet where you can change the number of products displayed per page. Very simple. You take it all, you go to your functions.php, and you add under that, it says display 24 products per page. This 24 is also there. So all you need to change is, for example, I want two per page, I remove the four, I remove the four. This should now show only two products. So we save, we upload the file back to the server, we go to the shop page, we refresh, and voila, you have two products on the shop page, and on page two, you have the other two. So guys, this is nothing complicated. As just as you've seen, what is it? five lines of code and we already achieved a lot within the WooCommerce shop page. You will never need more than this really. So these two articles are great. I always reference them and you will use them a lot. Don't tell me why they have 137 dislikes because I think this should be a super, super helpful um, um, article. Right, so we've seen how to change the rows and the columns and the number of products. Now let's try to remove something. So we've edited something. Now I want to remove something that, you know, some web designers or some store owners, they don't want to have. For example, some people that want to have this sort by price, sort by popularity. The, some other people that want to know how many products are in the shop, right? That want to show them or it's not useful to that e-commerce store. So how do we remove this? Well, once again, you go to my visual guide and you will find out somewhere in the code and exactly down here that the archive page, that's also the second name for the shop page because Archive stands for shop category and tags, sorry, and tag pages. So archive is anywhere you have products, all right? And as I said to you again, there is one file that controls everything. 
Now, the archive page has some default actions. These are the default WooCommerce actions. And we will see that there is something before the main content, something that regulates the description, something that is shown before the loop. For example, take note of this, the result count, for example, the catalog ordering. So WooCommerce is adding these elements by default. All we need to do, seriously, nothing complicated, is adding one line of code. And instead of add, we write remove. We've said it a lot in the previous episodes, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. And I'm basically going to go into Google how to remove the, what is it called? Default sorting drop down. You possibly find one of my articles and I give you the simple solution. And look, the solution is one line of code. It's that exact same piece of code that we've seen, but instead of add, it has remove. All right. Now I'm using a storefront team, and the storefront team is a little bit different. It has a default sorting above and below the shop. So for some reason, they have it duplicated. So you have to actually go through the storefront code, take a look at where they're duplicating that and what priority they're using. But here you get the solution. So all you have to do is taking this all snippet from my site, you go to the functions, you edit, you add it here. Make sure you comment to say what this does, which is remove the default sorting drop down in storefront team. You save and go to the shop, refresh, take a look here, gone. All right, so the default drop down is gone. Very, very simple. Seriously, one line of code, guys. So nothing surprising here. We haven't overwritten any template. We haven't done absolutely anything. All we've done is one little line of code. All right. So one more thing. I want to remove the showing the thing results. Once again, Google it or take a look at my visual guides or you possibly find my article somewhere, how to remove showing the single result for storefront team because once again they have done something special so it's a little bit different than um the uh, just let me reload this than a non-storefront team so i have both solutions no problem save i'm going to upload it back to the server and Refresh, take a look at this before I refresh and it's gone. All right. So in basically five minutes, we've modified the layout, we've removed information, we've added information above and below. We've basically done a lot already. And you see it's not rocket science. I hope this is clear enough. You don't particularly need PHP skills, all you need to understand is how this works, is how, you know, the main structure is built and how people like me, like Wu teams, like anyone else, they are happy to share solutions out there. The only different, you know, difficult thing to understand is where to put these codes. And the answer is, in the functions.php of your child team. If you don't understand this, then study how that's done or watch one of my videos or my online course, doesn't matter, but it is such a vital thing to have uh, whenever you do uh, development, whenever you're testing, whenever you're designing a site for a client or you're tweaking your own site. So I want to get a little bit bit more into detail. So we've seen the uh, visual hooks, we've seen 
how to change the number of products, how to change the number of rows, how to remove the sort thing, how to remove the show in the single result. Now, also on the shop page, of course, you have products. Okay, each product is called item. So you have, in our case, you have four items. All right, each of these items has specific hooks, specific actions that in where you can hook your functions. What does that mean? Possibly I'm speaking Japanese to you, but what I'm saying is that each one of these items has an image, a product title, a price, an add to cart, and in the same way, each of these items can also have extra content. For example, I want to actually show the stock quantity of each product and i want to show it right here i believe in my industry or for my users knowing the stock it is so important to have on this page for example how do you do that once again google it you possibly find one of my articles you don't even need to know php because all you have to do is taking the snippet including the comment, which is a very, very smart thing to have. You go to your functions.php. And you know what? I want to remove everything we've done. So it's easier to see. But this should add the stock quantity somewhere in the loop under each item. So I save, I upload the file to the server. I go to the shop page, refresh, and take a look at what's, gonna, what's going on. Well, here you go. Five left in stock. So, and, you know, in particular, this snippet, you will see it in the code. What it does is, if the stock is less than three, it'll say, only two left in stock, exclamation mark. Otherwise, it'll say five left in stock or 17 left in stock. This is if you've enabled stock for the product. So what this means is that this product, the simple one, the variable one, the variable two, I didn't enable stock on them and therefore not in its showing. So it's a little bit complex, but you don't really need to understand much. What I wanted to show you is that there are ways to add something to each item and it doesn't need to be the stock it could be a simple free shipping or a simple benefit for each item how do we do that well i'm going to show you right now i'm going to study how each item is shown in my visual hook guide each item before the image has a before shop loop item, before shop loop item title, shop loop, loop item title, this is very com complicated to say. Then there is a WooCommerce after shop loop item title with the price, WooCommerce after shop loop item. So I'm gonna pick one, it doesn't matter, I'm testing, okay? So let's try with the uh, WooCommerce shop loop item title. I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to open my functions.php and I'm going to remove the snippet with stock temporarily. And I'm going to digit add action, open parenthesis, open single quote. I paste the action called, the, sorry, the hook called WooCommerce shop loop item title. I close that comma and I create my own function. For example, I want to print shipping close single quote close and and on and now if i'm saying you have to add this function in that position i have to declare the function so i go here to do function same name open and close parentheses open and close parentheses and i'll say echo shipping 
exclamation mark. <laughs> you want to put exclamation marks on, on your uh, on your store, but this is fun. So I'm gonna save and see what happens. I save and I'm going to upload the file back. Go back to the shop, refresh, and magic happened. Look at that. I have the free shipping here appearing under each item. So you see how by using the WooCommerce shop loop item title, WooCommerce shop loop item title, WooCommerce shop loop item title, I'm basically adding the same content to each product in the loop. Now, isn't that cool? I think it is because I know that we, we don't have a lot of time today, but um, it is so, so fun to actually be able to adding everything, everything you possibly, you can possibly imagine to um, the um, to the shop page, all right? Uh, I know that someone was asking there for the recordings. Of course, I will send the recordings as soon as I edit the video and cut all the parts that are not necessary. So I was able to add text to all the images, sorry, to all the products in the loop. So I can keep going if I wanted. I can once again go back to the function. I want to reload it. I can even start putting pure HTML. I put heading three, free shipping. Then I, I, I can add an image. I can add, uh, I can do absolutely anything I want. This is so, so cool. You can add all the HTML that you like. So we can save, we can upload back. And let me see what happens on the shop. Awesome. So this has become a heading. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to click there. This has become a heading tree. This has become some HTML with heading six. So guys, this is so, so simple. It's nothing complicated. All you need to do is identify the right position within the visual hope guide where you want to add your information. So we've seen how to add the stock quantity. You can even, as we've seen, add text to each product on the shop page. You can even show a product custom field in the page. What's a product custom field? Now, when you open a product and you go into edit product, the product itself has a lot of custom fields right here. Look at this. It has attributes, it has, I don't know, discount type, individual use. I'm sure it has weight, height, uh, width. So you can basically return anything you like in the loop and even a new custom field that you might want to give to each of your products. For example, let's say this is a special product. You want to call this special custom field. And you want to say, you know, in case this product is special, you want to say, this gets free shipping. Does that make sense? So basically, what I've done is for some specific products, I'm adding my custom field. I save, and then I go and take this snippet. I remove what we've done now. And remember how we called our custom field? I think we called the special. Save. I don't know what's going to happen now, so I'm just going to test. That's why it's great to have a development site, because if you're going to break something, there is no problem with that. Um, while if you're working on a live site, then uh, you might, you know, 
cause loads of problems. So it worked. See how the only product with a custom field has the free shipping echoed there while the others don't. So custom fields, guys, and possibly whenever you want to do something super advanced, even using the uh, advanced custom fields for WordPress plugin, that's a super, super good one. You can add dates, you can add uh, time pickers, you can add very complicated things, and you just need basically three lines of code, as we've seen in this snippet. Once again, don't forget, I'm going to share all these links uh, together with the recordings, so you don't need to find out what the URL is and what the code is. You can just keep playing with this. My goal today is to show you all you can do. And you know what? If you don't spend some time working on this and testing, then you'll never learn. So my goal is not to give you solutions. My goal is to give you um, some knowledge. Now it's up to you to go and um, test and see what works for you. So we've seen basically almost everything, and we're surprisingly on time. And remember, I was going to basically um, show you how you can customize the shop page. Then we were going to talk in the last 10 minutes about conditional logic. And that's what we're going to go into right now. And then finally, in the last 15 minutes of today, we're going to do lots of questions and answers. I'm going to get back into the chat because at the moment you're looking at my screen, but I have no idea what you're writing in the chat. And we will then say goodbye. So we've seen basically how to do all this customization. The problem is, and possibly we get back to the very, very first thing we said, it is that this page and the loop is controlled by one single WooCommerce file. No matter whether you're on the shop, whether you're on the category page or the tag page or the home page with a short code showing products, you know, that is controlled by one single PHP file in WooCommerce. How do you show conditional content? So content that goes only on a specific tag, only on a specific category, only on the shop and not on the category and tags. Now, it's very, very simple. If you Google conditional logic, you'll find conditional tags. And this is such a great resource. This resource is saying that there is a way in PHP to control on which page you're currently right now. This is controlling whether you are on the shop page. This is controlling if you are on a category page, which is different. This is controlling if you're on a tag page. All right. So whatever we've done earlier, it was going to go into all of them on the shop, on the category, and on a tag page. Why? Because they behave in the same way, because they're controlled by the same file. So this way, you can basically create and generate an echo different content depending on the category slug or depending on the tag slug or depending on whether you are on the shop versus if you are on a category page. So for example, let me do one very uh, interesting thing. So we have here the WooCommerce archive description. And I want to do a simple line of PHP code. I hope this is fine with you. I'm going to say add action WooCommerce archive description, comma, my function. I want to do something like show um, category, uh, I don't know, intro. All right. So my goal here is to show something above each category, just under the title. If you remember my visual hook guide, 
you see there is the title and then there is the SOOC, the WooCommerce Archive Description. So I go here, I just declare this function. Sorry, I mentioned that function, so I need to declare it here. Open and close, open and close, and I'm going to say echo test category intro. Okay. I save, I go here, upload it back to the server, go back to my shop page and see what happens. Now, you see how we are on the shop page and our test, sorry, our text is showing. I don't want this. This text is showing on the shop, on the category page, and even, if I'm not wrong, on the tag page. Why? Because this hook belongs to the three pages and all the pages that contain a loop, all right, an archive. So how do we do, how do we tell WooCommerce just to apply this on the category pages? Once again, you go here, find out that the is product category returns true when viewing a product category archive. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going back to my function and I reload it. This time I'm going to put a check. I'm going to put lots of spaces here just for you. And I'm going to say if open it's out of category, then echo. Otherwise, do nothing. Does that make sense? So this conditional logic, this conditional tag here is allowing you to make the, the function run only on that specific page of the archive. So I'm going to save, and fingers crossed that this is going to work. I save, I go to the shop, shop page. No more content. You see here, category page is right there. Tag page, gone. So you see how easy it actually is to define where you want to run that function. In this moment, in this example, we're running that function only on the category pages. All right. And that's the very first thing. Now, I want to go a level deeper. We have two minutes left until our questions and answers. And you can also define what category you want to echo HTML and what category you don't want to. So given if, given that this is a product category, and given that my shop has, let me go to the dashboard, WooCommerce, sorry, products, categories, it has two categories. One is called category one slug and one is called category two slug, okay? I'm going for now to remove all this stuff just to make it a little bit easier. Um, so remember this category one and category two when we are going to code. So I'm going to open our functions.php and this time inside this if already because I still want to apply this change only on product categories but this time I want to have a test category one intro and I want to do a test category two intro so I want to have something different depending on the category what you do is you go onto your Wood teams and you find out that there is a conditional tag where you can define the product category slug. So you take this and in the code, what you do is this. First of all, you indent because they're inside the if. Here you start another if. if 
this product category, and now we put category one, then you echo the, uh, sorry, open close. All right, so if it's product category, category one, then you echo the intro that belongs to the category one. If this instead is product category category two, echo. So and this is very simple, guys. I'm just gonna save. I'm gonna upload the file back to the server. I'm going to uh, sorry, go back to the shop page. This is the shop. There is no sign of our intro. This is the tag. There is no sign of our intro. But now I want to go to category one. Boom. Test category one intros. That's correct. And now I want to go into category two. Boom. Test category two intro. Now, you know, we've been talking for about 45 minutes. I haven't even checked if this has worked or not. So fingers crossed. But I want to know. And I want to tell you that customizing the shop page is not rocket science. You can remove things, you can edit things, you can do conditional work, depending on whether you are on the shop page, on the category page, on the tag page, and even by category. So it's very common, for example, to put a different banner for each category, right? And this is the way and I want to open that function again because I believe it's really nice looking. You can simply say, right, are we on the category pages? Yes. Then execute this code. But first, check, are we on category one page? If yes, echo this. If not, echo this other thing. So this is very, very simple coding. And I want to conclude our customized Woo episode five right here because as usual we've gone over time and now you have basically a list 13 15 minutes guys to ask me all the questions you have about the shop all the feedback you have about today's lesson or the previous classes and also all the ideas that you have for future lessons i'm going to keep